Hi everybody, my name is Nick Justrician, and I teach virtual production at Drexel University. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can combine different animations from mocap and apply them together on a single character. So what am I talking about? Well, we have two different motion capture takes here. They were both downloaded from Mixamo. In one, the character is seated. The other, the character is standing and speaking on the phone. So what we want to do is create this animation, this third one here, where the character is seated and talking on the phone. So we're using the first motion capture here just for the hips and lower body. And we're using the second motion capture for the top of the body. Turns out this is actually really easy to do in Unreal Engine. And it's incredibly powerful because if you have a library like Mixamo that has lots of animations that uh, you could combine, now you've exponentially increased the number of animations that you can create with that library. All right, so let's get this started from the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to start from this point where I've already got a character downloaded and in my level from Mixamo, as well as uh, downloaded a number of animations from Mixamo as well. This is, video is part of a series, and in part one, I talked about how you can select and download characters for free from Mixamo, as well as select and download animations. So if you haven't seen that and you need a tip on that, go ahead and check out that video. It's linked in the description. For here, we've got our character, and I chose two animations for this particular demo. There's this one where the character is uh, you know, essentially dialing out or answering a phone call and you're walking around and talking. And then I also went to the search and uh, typed in the word sit and chose this, uh, this right here, sitting idle. It's basic sitting animation and downloaded both of those. So those are now in my content browser, just like uh, previous tutorials. And we've got sitting idle here and we've got talking on the phone here. In order to use the sitting idle for the hips and legs, independent of talking on the phone for really the spine, arms, and head, uh, we're going to use something called an animation blueprint. And so this actually serves as a really great introduction to uh, animation blueprints in general because this one is super easy to do. Basically what an animation blueprint does is it sits in between incoming animations and the skeleton of the character themselves. And so we can combine different animations together using the animation blueprint to control where that blend happens. So I'm going to go into my content browser and create an animation blueprint for this character. The character is CHO2. I'm going to right click and go to animation and choose animation blueprint. And here we have an opportunity to choose which skeleton we're going to use. And of course, there's our character two skeleton. So we'll choose that and say create. And now we've got that blueprint. I'm going to name it CHO2 underscore and I'll, I'll call this slots because we're going to use a feature called slots to uh, direct where the different animations are going to go. And then I'll just call this anim BP. All right. So we've defined what character this is for character two. We find uh, some functionality information slots and uh, anim BP. So I'm going to go ahead and click save all. So we've got everything saved and then I'll double click on this animation blueprint to open it up. Okay. So here's our blank animation blueprint. Uh, it's not 100% blank. There is actually a node here. Or this is called a node, and it's got an output pose. So this is the ultimate output of the animation blueprint. And what we can do inside this, what's called a uh, graph, an animation or node graph, is that we could define how inputs get processed and where they end up getting placed over the body. So we're going to make a really, really simple animation blueprint as an illustration. So first of all, let's get an input out on the animation graph. So what I'm going to do is right click in the blank space and type in the word default slot. I mentioned that I named this um, animation blueprint uh, with the word slots in it so that uh, we would take advantage of slots. And so the default slot is named default slot. So this is essentially the default input for the character. So any animation coming into the character arrives here in the default slot and I can drag from the output of that and connect it to the output pose. Now we're not seeing any flow of information because I haven't compiled. So I'll hit compile here. And now you've get, got an illustration here of the flow of data uh, from the default slot into the output pose. So let's uh, create our own custom slot and this will be for the upper body. So I'm going to go over here to my animation slot manager. If you're not seeing that, you can go to the window menu here in the editor, not in the viewport, but over here in the editor window, 
and choose Animation Slot Manager. Make sure that's checked and you should get it here in the uh, interface. So I'm going to go ahead and add a slot and I'm going to give it the name Upper Body and hit Enter. And uh, the default slot automatically appears as well since we already have it out here. And so now we have a default slot and an upper body slot. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really drag and drop it. And when I right click, uh, if I type in upper body, uh, it doesn't show up either. So easy way of uh, putting that out here is just to take our existing uh, input slot, control C copy, and then click somewhere else and control V paste. And so now I've got a copy of that and I can go over here to the properties of my selected copy and choose upper body here. So I'm just clicking and choosing upper body. And so now this input slot is uh, going to allow for a second animation to be applied. But now I need to choose how do we blend these? Where does the default slot control the body and where does the upper body control the body? And the way we do this is use a blend per bone. Basically, we define at which bone in the hierarchy of joints in this character's joint system, where does that input take over? So we have a node called um, blend per bone. So I think I'll right click here and type in blend per bone. Whoops, there we are. Layered blend per bone. I'm going to select that. We're going to have the default slot be our base pose, and we're going to have the blend pose be from the upper body. The blend weight is set to one by default, so that means that this will take over wherever we define it. And then finally, with this selected, we need to define what bone is going to take over. Now here, I've got uh, character, bones, and all hierarchically uh, selected. If I um, deactivated that, you know, you might see this in your uh, Viewer, when you first display it, you can do character and bones and all hierarchy, and then you can see the bones. And I can also do character and bones and bone names. So now if I use my mouse wheel and zoom in real close, you can see we have uh, zero is hips, and uh, the bones like for the legs go down here, and then the bones for the spine. The very first spine bone is not called spine one, it's called spine. So that's the one that I'm going to blend on. So the upper body is going to take over at the spine bone, and then it'll continue to uh, be applied to all of the bones that are children of the spine bone. And so that's everything in the upper body. So with the layer blend per bone selected, I have a layer set up and the index is zero and there's nothing in there by default. So I'm going to add an item, expand this, and I have to type in the bone name again, spine. So I will type in the word spine. And whoops, uh, make sure that's saved. Yep. Okay. Enter. So now when uh, the upper body has animation, it'll be applied to beginning at the spine bone and for all the bones that are children of that. So I'll connect this to my output result and I will compile. And now we can see how the flow is. And that's it. That's our entire animation blueprint. So really, really simple. All right, so this is all done. We'll go ahead and close it. To put that animation blueprint to use, we have to apply it to the character actor. So this is the actor in our level, and she's selected. If I go over here to details, and I look at animation, there's an animation mode option. And with this, we want to make sure we select our animation blueprint. So I'm going to go ahead to use animation blueprint, and then I'll select an animation blueprint. And I know that I named it after the character, so I'll do CH02, CH02, let's try that. There we are. And here's our character two slots and MVP. Nothing happened in here because we don't have any input set up, but now that is ready to go. I'll go ahead and save all, save everything we've got. And let's go ahead and put this to use in a sequence. So I'll go right click and I can uh, go into uh, cinematics, I think. Yep. And we'll go ahead and create a level sequence. And I'll just call this uh, slots demo seq01. And control S, save that and double click. And I've already got it set up down here in the bottom based on previous tutorials. So we're going to add this actor to our sequence. She's already selected actor to sequencer, add character. And I'll add the first animation. Now the first animation I'm going to do is the sitting one, the default one. 
it's going to stay in charge of the lower body. So we'll go ahead and add an animation. I'll type in the word sit. And there's sitting idle. And there she is sitting. Okay. So she's sitting here, but her upper body is still stuck in a T pose. And that's because that slot upper body hasn't been given any animation to work with yet. So what we're going to do is add an additional animation track. You know what? Let me just make sure this is going into the default slot. There we go. Right click. Properties. Yep. Slot name. Default slot. That's where we define where the animations go. So I'll go ahead and add an additional animation track. So I go to the existing animation track. Add an animation. And this one's going to be the one that's on the phone. Talking on the phone. And initially, they kind of blend strangely. And that's because by default, talking on the phone is going into the default slot. So they're being blended together and nothing is still going to the upper body slot. So I'll right click on here, properties, and then in default slot here, I will type in upper body and hit enter and we're good. So there we go. Now our character is sitting. So the sitting idle is coming into the default slot and the talking on the phone is going into the upper body. And we have a brand new animation. I'll tap uh, the character, tap E, rotate her to fit into the chair. This chair is just from the uh, Twin Motion Chairs and Tables collection that's free on the marketplace. And there we go. That is how we can apply two different animations to a single character. And that, again, exponentially increases the amount of uh, animation we can get out of a comprehensive library like Mixamo. Now, it is possible to actually build out a more intricate animation blueprint where we could drive different animations to the arms and the head as well as the torso. Uh, but I think that's a little out of scope for this intro. So this will be just sticking to the basics of uh, making a really simple animation blueprint so that you can have upper and lower body being driven by different animations. In a later tutorial, we'll get a little more advanced and uh, start getting some additional control over individual arms and such. So I hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.